I think that's controlled by the Belgians and, and the South Africans controlled by British. And so that was certainly quite a, the people I guess thought there was, had some dooms over here in the United States, so they sent the mail on down to Durban, South Africa. And so then when, that night uh, I was in the room and we had such a glorious meeting. The angel of the Lord had come down, the medical association called me up to have breakfast with them, give me the right hand of fellowship, put anything in our hospitals. It's at your disposal. Come on. Anybody wants to come, come be prayed for. I said, Reverend Van, that's true divine healing. And said, we're not opposed to that. And I said, thank you. And so we, and all the newspapers are speaking and how the Lord was blessing. Seemed kind of strange to have to leave where many, many, many thousands of people where he couldn't even get them into the city. They were well, out in the great big field of the place where they had a ground out there. And so, but... I said, I'd like to go down to Cape Town. That's about as far south as you can go without going to the South Pole. I said, I'd like to go down there. So I said, does not make any difference to me? And that night, the angel of the Lord appeared to me by vision and said, don't go with them, man. You stay right here for two more weeks and then go to this farm where the man is going to speak tomorrow, Mr. Jackson, and then from there, you go on over to, to Durban and stay there a month. Well, little did I know that that was the only place that they didn't have segregation. Well, uh, two of my managers, uh, they and the men, Brother Baxter said, that you see the National Committee? And I went to see them, and all of them, wow, you talk about going up. The only thing they know was that ecclesiastical setup. So that's, no, sir, we're not going to do it. We're going in there that way. I said, Brother, the Lord told me not to do it. So I, I said, no, I can't do that. So I just refused to do it. Well, here they come the car and take me anyhow. And then on the road down, I said, stop the car. I said, the Lord is telling me not to do this. So I stopped. There's a lot of locusts in South Africa. And uh, so I pulled off some of the leaves off the locust tree, spread them over the men's feet. I said, in the name of the law, we can't take that trip. I said, it's not the Lord's will. Oh, yes, it is. And the ministers got right back at me. One of them walked up and said, Brother Bailey, don't you think God speaks to somebody else besides you? I said, Cole, I had that idea one time when he talked to Moses. Yes, followed him up. I said, this one thing I do know, I don't know what he's told you, but I know what he's told me. And I said, after I stood there for these three or four nights in Johannesburg and you see this work moving and so forth, you didn't mean to tell me that I wouldn't know what God said? Mr. Baxter walked up the time, called me over to one side and talked to me. He said, well, we, this is all, these men here, we're coming under, I said, but Brother Baxter, this is a vision from the Lord. He said, then I'll have no more to do with it. See, if it's a vision from the Lord. And I don't guess, uh, and most all of you know Brother Bosworth, a very fine Christian gentleman. And he was with us. He walked over to me and said, Brother Brandon, I think you're wrong man. I said, oh, Brother Bowser. I said, you'll see. So they was going on anyhow. We was right there just a few miles and then we from it when we got down there a little place for about six thousand people and probably ten thousand there. An old place to eat, sleep, and nothing. So it was laying out there and it was a nice, fine, warm day. And just before they got ready to take me to the meeting that night, there come a tropical storm. New people in America don't know what a storm is when you see one of those. I'd like to drown it, everybody out there, and at 10 o'clock it was still going. No service. All the ministers came back to the place where I was. I said, I told you. <laughs> the Lord isn't satisfied. He's angry because what we are doing out, out of his will. While he said, the Lord told us to do this, I said, he might have, but he told me not to. And uh, he said, well, then the next day he said, oh, this is all time, Brother Van. And the next day, just about time we got ready to take the come a blizzard like the pills of the body today. Then we come back. I said, now tomorrow night we'll have earthquake for him. So they said, do you mean we'll have an earthquake? I said, no, I know he mean, he told me we'd have an earthquake, but brethren, we're out of the will of God. And we can't prosper doing this. So at 2 o'clock in the morning there, we were still going strong. And I said, the Lord has told me to return to Johannesburg. 
and stay there for two weeks and then go to Durban and stay there a month. Well, uh, they couldn't see that. So we promised the brethren. I said, no make any of what you promised the brethren. God is speaking. Man, sometimes we just get ourselves so wrapped up. To, this is the way it was. That's the way it is today. Same, same thing. So wrapped up, we just think it has to run according to the way the association says so, or you're not in the ring. You're wrong. God deals with individuals. That's right. Always that. And he does things that's very hard to understand. You have to know God to understand him. You know that. You know the scriptures. If you know the scriptures, you know it's true. So we just had an awful time. Then I, about 2 o'clock in the morning, somewhere around there, it was getting late. I said, well, they all, I said, we're out. Well, I said, oh, he has a permissive will to permit something, but he wants to work God's permissive will. I will do what he wants me to do. See, not being his permissive will. Well, it went on. So they got, oh my, his permissive will. Go ask him about that. Well, I went in to pray, and Billy Paul went in with me, my boy. Your little fellow gives out the prayer cards here. And when he went in the room, I shall never forget, he put his arm around me as he walked in the door, said, Daddy, you listen to God, don't you listen to the preachers out there? But I'm with you. But we have to swim home, see? But I'll stay right with you, Daddy. You better listen to God. And I'd have been a million times better off if I'd listened to the boy, too. And I say that with respect. He's just a kid, but uh, he certainly, God was with him. And I got down to pray, he'd go pray with me. Of course, just being a lad, he got sleepy and went to bed. And I prayed on till long in the morning. He came into the room, and I said, What are these men? What do they mean? He said, Go on down with them. He said, You're in a condition now. It's been lit out like this, so you have to do it. He said, But remember, it's not the will of God, and you're going to pay for it. But go on. He said, You might know this. He said, Go wake up your son, and tell him in the morning you're going to send him to Sunday school. And they're going to decide to pray for the sick. And on the road back, he's going to start back with a man in a little black car. And he's going to pick up another young man. And on the road down, there'll be a navy dressed in a white sapphire suit, standing by a eucalyptus tree near a bridge, fixing to strike another with a stick in his hand. So your son will call your attention to it. By that, you don't know that I'm letting you go. But remember, you'll pay for it. So when you left the room, I went and woke Billy up and told him, Mr. Baxter, which is right here now, standing right back behind the platform here, can you walk out and give a testimony if there's any error to this? Mr. Jackson, who's sitting present, and many the others. And I walked into, after waking Billy up and telling Billy what the rules of the Lord said, see, God respected him because he was on the right side. So I walked in to where the man was. I woke them all up, Brother Bosworth, Brother Baxter, Brother Sutcliffe, all of them. I said, I have... The word from the Lord, he just met me in the room. Now he said we could go down there, but it will not be as successful as it should be. And we are going to suffer, uh, I am myself going to suffer a great loss, and you all are going to suffer too. And I said, because he told me that I was, was not obeying his orders, but he would permit it to be the after continents and things that set this up and done that, but it's not his will, and I'll have to pay for it. And Brother Baxter, which is listening to me now, I said, Thus saith the Lord, if we take that meeting, it'll be, when we go back to America, it'll be between six months and a year before we ever have another service. I said, Something's fixing to happen. Washington in Shreveport, Louisiana, the Holy Spirit came up on me, and I it was prophesying and said that. There was a trap set for me in Africa. You mean now? I say, be back in a few minutes. He's called on a place to go. So we, um, I went down and I said, well, all right. We'll see what takes place. Brother Bosworth. A dear old man, like a daddy to me. He turned over in the bed. He said, Brother Branham, you're wrong. I looked at him and my heart just broke. 
See, no matter who it is, you've got to put your trust in God. And, and they're my own brothers. And Brother Bosworth said, Brother Bram, you're wrong there. He said, if you go down to take this subpoena or you go down to the air, you're going to see the exceedingly, abundantly, above all, you know, his, his word there. And I said, Brother Bosworth, do you mean to tell me I'm speaking to you, Brother Bosworth, that God has appeared in the vision which cannot fail? And he said, Brother Bram, that Satan, I read the book one time where Satan gave Adam a false vision. My brother, I said, Brother Bosworth, you stood with me on the platform for the past five years now. And you've seen everything in North Perfect. I said, I don't know what Satan did to Adam, but I know this comes from God. And I said, now look at this. See, you, no matter who it is, when God tells you to do something, you do it. I don't care if it's your mother, daddy, if it's a pastor, if it's the prophet, or whoever it is, you listen to God. And, and you remember, I'm telling you the truth. Witnesses are standing there. God is my witness. I said, all right. I told him what was going to happen. Went on out that morning when they went down there. Sure enough, they sent back the when they come pray for six. A young fellow came at me in a, in a, with Billy in a little a black car. Of course, you're not supposed to speak to me because he done told me to make ready for the anointing to preach and to pray for the sick. And on the road, he picked up another boy on the road up. And Billy was all thrilled about that. And on the road down, he turned around and said, Daddy, something is standing by a eucalyptus tree, by a bridge, stood a native with a white sapphire suit on, fixing a strike. And I said, Daddy, look at that man. Go to hit that earth. And I said, you remember what I told you? The little fellow cried when he seen what the Lord had brought to the... I said, you see, Paul, I can go, but Dad will suffer for this. See? Well, as we left there, we went to Clarkstall. There, trouble set in. First one thing and then another, one minister there, minister, said, the brothers told me it could be helped my church. About 15,000 people with a church that would seat about 500. No, sir, we wasn't going to get to the place. They promised it would be in his church. And that's where it was going to be held. Brother Bosworth just took off his hat and walked down the street. Brother Baxter walked away and he got him another place to stay. I said, Brother Bosworth, this is that exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think of doing. You know what was told you? It'll be this until we go home. I said, you see if it isn't. And Brother Baxter, who's near now, is a witness before God and knows this to be the truth, knows that that is the truth. And there it just started from one thing to another justice. What, just piling one on top of the other, one on top of the other, until we come back down to Cape Town. Now the Lord blessed his, his power, his works, went right on just the same. But when it came to the place that we started back up towards Grahamstown, out of Port Elizabeth, Brother Baxter taken very sick. Very sick. Billy Paul taken very sick. Now we started just one thing piling on top of another. And then, after a while, I taken sick. I went to the Lord. Just turned his back on me. We went on to Durban. I stood there under the inspiration. God brought 30,000 people in one order home. To the altar. Yet, that was God's grace. But me, I knew it. And then when we got to Durban, there's the only place they let the, the black people and the white people come together. The other sound, the Holy Spirit knew that in the beginning. See? And so they were just as far as you could see people out on the big racetracks, just as far as you could see this solid mass of people. And for four city blocks down the streets was this setting, just like you're sitting here, blocked off in city blocks. Pouring down rain and so forth, they never noticed that. They just kept sitting there. But and then when I got there and thought, sure, they let me stay here a while, they had the meeting already arranged just, I think, three days in Durban. Then I had to go come over to southern Rhodesia, come up into Rhodesia then, and then come back down to Pretoria after being up there two days. And so sick, I couldn't hold my head up. 
Then I went back to the man, and all of us sick and all tore up, everything going wrong. I went back to the man, and I said, Do you remember what I told you? Coming across the sea, I said to Brother Baxter, Do you remember when I got here to America, come to find out that down in there among the Indians somewhere, in there had set in parasites, sticking in the stomach, down through the intestinal tract, which is causing the dysentery, and he's just about to die, every one of us, sick, upset. Then God began to speak to me. Then I promised him as I walked the floor and crying, and we never had another meeting until between seven and eight months after that. I was so sick I couldn't go. Just as sick I just couldn't even raise my head up hardly. Just standing there waiting for God. Then one night he came down in a vision. Oh, you never know how it feels. He walked down there. I was laying in the room. He came to me and he said, Now, don't fear. My sin was forgiven. He told me what was going to happen. He said, Now, it's going to go away from you. You'll be all right, but don't disobey no more. So what's told you? He said, Now, you're going to take a meeting. And he set me down again at Durban, uh, South Africa. And I've seen the old meeting of many, many thousands fading into the blue to the west. Sitting before me said tens of thousands of people. Then he told me, he said, turn to your right. And as I turned to my right, a great light came down from heaven, hung over where I was. It was an oscillating light, and in there were men dressed half like this with something wrapped around, a little skinny looking man, with their hands up in the air, appraising God. And I said, they look like Indians. And then this light came down, an oscillating light, and went way back over the hills, and there were thousands upon thousands of them in there. And then I said, are they all black people? And he put it down in front of me here, and there were white people. And I looked back this way, and they were the Indian-type people. And I said, and then it came real close to me, and I heard the number that he called. He said, there's 300,000 of them in that meeting. Now mark that down in your book. You see if there is a meeting help there that will consist of 300,000 people. That's before it comes to pass that you might know. How many of you remember of the prophesying of a little boy would be raised about two years before he was raised in Finland? Hold up your hand, you that know about it. Look at there at the witnesses, see? All oh, just exactly what it would look like, where he would be, just how it would be. And he was laying dead for around 30 minutes on the highway. Many of you remember the story. And how it was there, and I said, in old fear, in the voice of healing, there with the Finnish officials with their stamps, laying in all house today, government seals on the paper that had taken place. See, a little boy had been stricken, killed. There was a vision of the Lord came down and told about the other boy. You've heard the story many times, no doubt, and in the book. Now, those things are what God says do. Now, the other day, when I, I wouldn't make a meeting until God spoke to me, and then I felt very definitely impressed about Hammond, Indiana. When I went out to Hammond to look around, well, I seen the auditorium. It wasn't air conditioned. Everybody said, that's a graveyard. Don't you go there. Boy, if you go there, that, that's a really a graveyard. Said, there's nothing there. Said, some fellows done got in there preaching divine healing and scattered the things, but it's horrible. Well, the Lord told me to go to Hammond. So I went to Hammond. He said, how long are you going to stay? I said, from one day till Jesus comes. I don't know. I said, now, don't never make a meeting any definite time. Because I don't know. Just I promised God just as he would lead, I'd go. Just wherever he went. I, I don't. That's the reason I'm not with the voice of healing. None of those papers. I can't have papers. No, sir. If I follow God, I ain't got time for papers. I got to do what he tells me to do. Some of these men can set their meetings for two or three years ahead. If they live there, that's their ministry. Mine's not that type of ministry. I've got to do what he says do. All of you realize that. And then he sent me to him. There's a meeting here, down here, Baltimore, I believe it was, that an auditorium that seated 10,000 people, absolutely free, the whole month of July, air conditioned, 
and 500 preachers signed up. I've got the papers laying in my desk today, some of them Methodists, some of them Baptists, and full gospel preachers, 500 of them to cooperate with the meeting. Brother Bosworth said, you can't beat that, Brother Branham. I said, God can. One place where he would tell me, I don't care if there isn't five people there, if he tells me to go, that's where I want to go. It isn't the idea of how many people there. It's the will of God we have under consideration. Now, uh, these men who just pray for the sick and come up and they say, we'll be here in this year and we'll be over there at a certain date and we, their papers are going out. That's all right. That's their ministry. Mine's not that type of ministry. And so I don't know where to go tomorrow, and I, wherever the Lord would say. And then... Brother Baxter said, there's many people here, some people from Battle Creek, there's some people from over here and down here and up to Minneapolis and all around, people from San Francisco and so forth, great meetings to be said. I said, Brother Baxter, I have no leading at all, none at all. He said, well, let's go into Chicago. They got a great big place up there, a big arena of a place. I said, sounds all right. Then he started to go down there one day and he said, well, shall I secure Mr. Bose and some of the ministers was down there. I said, no, you better wait a minute. I took my wife and them and went down and put them over at the planetarium. They wouldn't look through there. I walked back. It went over towards this place, and the Holy Spirit said, stay out of there. And I stayed out, too. I just bypassed it on by. So then, I didn't know why. I don't know. And he said, turn aside to Zion. I promised Zion. Long time ago, and I was coming under obligation. I said, all right, I'll go over to Zion. And then Brother Baxter come to me and said, what about where are we going from here? I said, now, Brother Baxter, I have no leading. He said, Brother Branham, if we get an auditorium, you've got to, you've got to place it down. And I said, yes, that's true. He said, well, what do you think about Battle Creek? I said, would you like to go up to Battle Creek? I said, the Battle Creek's just as clear to me as any of the rest of it. And I said, I think it'd be all right. And, uh, and so he... Uh, he said, well, I'll find out. And I believe he wrote up to the ministers or called them up or something other. He come back and said, you feel like you'd like to go to Battle Creek? I said, yes, I have two other considerations. One of them is Minneapolis and one of them is Battle Creek. I'm thinking on those two, praying about those two, but I don't know just yet. I said, I believe I feel a little more leading towards Battle Creek. I said, I'd rather go to Battle Creek. I believe because I've been in Minneapolis before. I said, he said, all right. So I'll make it Battle Creek. Well, I didn't know it was set up for a big, long time. So then, finally, I even told the baby's maid, I said, we'll be home this coming Monday, if the Lord permits. I said, as far as I know, I have, I said, I feel like between the two places because I had a reason not to go to Battle Creek or to the, over there because I'd been there before. Well, about, about four days before I went to then. He, Brother Baxter said, Brother Bose said that we could have the auditorium at his church and his little auditorium going to come by two or three nights before going over. I said, well, I'll take it under consideration. I said, now, we may be there one night. If the Lord says move, I, I go. He said, we better take, he said, we better take the church then. I said, all right. Yeah, I said, now, if it's all right, maybe one night. All right, we went on over there. We had a great, blessed meeting. But before I went up there, one night I was laying there, and I was, I listened closely. This is a confession. And I, I've been up way late in the night, people's coming and everything, and I went to sleep, and I, I slept through the night, and about five or six o'clock at morning, I was awakened up by a terrible dream. I dreamed of seeing a great big muddy wave of coming and it struck a little shanty and I know my wife was in there and I ran in and grabbed her and got out of the plate. And I said, oh, thanks to Lord. And I, I woke up. I said, my, it's an awful dream. And I looked over to her and she was asleep. The babies were asleep. I said, well, now something happened right there. I don't know what it was. In a few moments, I said, well, this is strange. I was thinking about a dream that I had in my room. And here I am sitting here on a sailboat of holding my hands in real clear blue water, not muddy water, clear blue water. I was going up the stream. Not, I thought, well, say, am I dreaming? 
And just a moment, I heard something behind me making a noise, going put, 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 put. I thought, well, this, what, I, I don't understand it. It's like if I was somewhere else and say I was speaking on the microphone in the church just a few moments ago, see? Just, I thought this is strange. And it kept coming. I noticed there's a little something in the water plumping up that way. And he'd come up to me and then turn that way. And then he'd go down, come back around this way, but 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 and then turn that way. And he'd come back again. I said, I don't understand this, and something drew near me. So look ahead. And I looked, and there was a road turns to the right. In the water. There's one turns to the left. So what is trying to tell you? Turn to the left. And then I said, well, what? I come to myself, I thought, say, was that, was that a dream, or did the, did, I, did the Spirit of the Lord come on me? The first time in all my life it ever did that. And I thought, well, that's the strangest thing that i ever seen. And I woke up, my wife, I said, honey, something's happened. I don't know whether to announce a vision or whether I, I, I went to sleep. I don't know. I said, it seems too clear to be asleep. But I'm not sure. I told her what it was. Well, I said, we just think it was a dream called. I was awake. I said, I might have went back to sleep. See, I said, I don't know. I can't tell what happened. In a few minutes, we went on out and was called out to breakfast. And after breakfast, all day long, I kept saying, I bet this keeps bearing with me. I tried to throw it off my mind. Saying, oh, it's, I just dreamed that. You can't put confidence in a dream, you know that. So I, I just said, that's a dream. That wasn't that. But I said, it, it still would bear with me. When I got over to Chicago, I called Brother Baxter, and I said, Brother Baxter, the strangest thing, something tells me turn to my left. I said, I don't know, and he said, well, and he's in a hurry, and just went on. We come over here, and then when I got over here, the Holy Spirit caught me the other day. I told you turn to your left. Well, then, in my room, I've been kind of perplexed about the way things was going. It didn't seem like the Spirit of God was operating right in the meeting. Brother Baxter comes up, Brother Branham? I said, yes. I said, now, of course, the gift of God, that operates anywhere. That's gifts and callings without repentance, you see. God will just hold you responsible for what you do with it, see. And uh, so then I said, there's something wrong. I said, a little auditorium won't see the work. 2,500 people. There's that little group. I said, that, but that isn't it, Brother Baxter. I said, there's something wrong. The Holy Spirit said, Brother Bram, I can't even speak. And I said, I don't know what's wrong. And I said, I, I can't tell you. And I said, well, I'm taking tomorrow afternoon and closing myself up and stay before God. And that's when he told me. I repented. Then we called the minister. Uh, one of the ministers, Brother Flo, came up. Brother Baxter said, will you speak to him? I said, yes, I'll speak to Brother Flo. I said, Brother Baxter, I don't know. And then I said, sure, I see it after he's revealed it to me, coming up to that Lake Michigan, that blue water's turned that way. I said, certainly. I don't know what in the world is matter me, Brother Baxter. I didn't recognize that for a vision. I said, I, I've asked God to forgive me. I've asked him to forgive me. You heard me speaking in the meeting uh, in the beginning of the week. I said, I don't know why I ever did that. Then Brother Flo came up, and sitting in the room as a gallant pastor of any group of people, he discussed it, and he said, Brother Branham, I, have, I, I know that God did this. I said, I'm not disputing your word, Brother Flo. He said, but look here. Then Brother Baxter said, now, Brother Branham, we got the minister, this brother here, under consideration. I said, yes, that's right. said, the rest of the cooperating ministers, 14 churches. We got them under consideration. I said, that's right, brother. Just then the Holy Spirit, I felt it. If you bring me to be God's servant, you listen to me now. God Almighty had permitted me to be kind of mixed up in that vision for the first one in my life to get me right back on the same pinnacle that I was at Clarkson, South Africa. There I was, the minister group, and this all under consideration and even the manager speaking towards the ministerial group, and here I was standing here to make my choice to serve God, do what God did, or do what the minister said do. That was my place. I, the grace of God came down. I said, brethren, 
I love you. We know that, and God knows that with all my heart. I said, but the Holy Spirit tells me to go yonder on the other side of the lake. And I said, I'm not going to do like I did in Africa, wait for something happens. I said, I'm going to the other side of the lake. So then uh, I said, I love you. And God knows that, but I must be obedient to God. And I promised him I'd never do it again. And I said, I must do it. And I said, now, Brother Baxter, in confirmation, give a ring over there. And just as he gave the ring over there, they were waiting for us. The auditorium and so forth. Waiting. See how it was? Just exactly. I said, now, we don't want to leave these brothers standing in it like this. We'll finish out the week with them here. Now, and Brother Flo, I guess he's sitting somewhere now listening to me, and he's a very fine Christian gentleman. And he was fighting for his church, of course, and for his prestige. And if the people here, he said he told the people this meeting, and so forth. I said, he said, what will I do about the public? Now, I know that was a hard thing. After he set the meeting up, that was a slip up on Brother Baxter. He shouldn't have made the meeting like that in the beginning. He should have said it just like we had an agreement to, but he'd seen the other meetings that went all the way through, thought maybe this one was the same. So he said, um, he, of course, he said he didn't mean He said, from this on, I'll never do it, set that up like that again. I'll let it be according to the Holy Spirit. Then, notice what's taking place. Then to come to Brother Flo, he said, look, I can't understand, Brother Brandon, that why that God would answer our prayer and then make all these things possible here, and then turn around and send you, I said, Brother Flo, you know what you need here in this city? I hear we are, friend. I am responsible to God. What you need in this city is a good old time gospel Holy Ghost shaking in this city. You need a revival, not a healing service. You need a revival to get people back on the spiritual line. Now, surely, now, I, I love you, but remember, friends, I'm duty-bound to Jesus Christ. You need a, a revival, see? I said, looky here, do you? He said, well, the Christians might understand, but said the lead. I said, look at Philip, having the biggest revival he ever had, and the Holy Spirit told him, get out of there and go out to the desert, Jason. Is that right? He never returned back no more. He went on, the Holy Spirit called him away and left that meeting standing there. Philip is the revival, have his revival. Now, I said, and also, he turned around, and the Holy Spirit first moved over to Brother Baxter. I seen that light move down in the room, moved over to Brother Baxter. I thought he was going to have me say something to Brother Baxter, but it switched and come to Brother Flo. I seen there what he was doing. I said, now, Brother Flo, the scripture you're thinking of now, you're thinking about that Isaiah that went up to Hezekiah and he said, that's what I was. That's exactly confirmation. The Holy Spirit there to prove. I said, looky here. There's a real scripture. I said, God told Isaiah, go up there and tell the king Hezekiah, set your house in order for you're not coming off this bed. You're going to die. Is that right? Now, let's just take this just for a moment. Now, the first thing you know, here comes all the people. Here's the high up here standing near the king's palace. There's the guards at the gate. There's the poor people on the outside listening. Here goes a prophet in to see for the word of the Lord. Comes back out and the, all the delegates of the king stand there saying, Prophet of God, we know that the Lord of the Lord dwells in you. What about the king? He's not coming off of that bed. Thus saith the Lord. He's going to die on that bed. All right, that settled it. Walks on out to the gateman, I see the gateman say, Prophet of God, what saith the Lord concerning our king? He's a righteous man, he's a godly man, and he's laying there on the bed. What saith the Lord concerning him? Thus saith the Lord, he's going to die on that bed and not come off the bed. Walks on out into the, to the poor class of people, all of them stand out there weeping over the righteous king laying on the bed. Prophet of the Most High God. They had confidence in him. Isaiah with his prestige as a prophet said, What does the Lord say, prophet of God, who the Lord is in his mouth? Tell us, 
what the Lord says about our king. Thus saith the Lord, he'll die on that bed. He's not coming off the bed. You think the prophet is telling the truth? Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and wept bitterly. He said, Lord, consider me. I've walked before you with a perfect heart. He prayed for 15 years more of life. Then, when the prophet had gone, I watched God's order. Why didn't he speak right back to Hezekiah? Hezekiah was talking to him. That wasn't his order. Do you believe Hezekiah was a righteous man? How many believe that? Raise your hand. Sure he was a true worshiper of God. And he talked face to face with Jehovah. You believe that? Jehovah heard his prayer. Well, why didn't he just say, now look, Hezekiah, I heard you. Now you're coming off the bed. Now, Isaiah's the one out made all that prophecy, but I'm, I, I'm telling you, you're going to come off the bed. Why didn't he do that? That wasn't God's way of doing it. He went back out to the prophet and said, return and tell him that I heard his prayer and he's going to live. Now here comes the prophet walking back. Oh, we're so hard. Well, no, Isaiah has to go back to face those people. No, uh, it's been changed now. It's been changed now because uh, he's going to he's going to live and not die. Walks into the gate and what about it, Isaiah? What's what's the matter? He's going to live and not die. Walked on into the up and up. What about it? He's going to live after he just said he's going to die. Is that right? What made the difference? Prayer changes things. Is that right? From death unto life. Prayer changes. There was a prophet who was very much embarrassed, no doubt, to go back as far as the people was concerned. But he had to do what God told him to do. Now look. Some of these, this going on around, you always seek the face of God. And I don't care who tells you anything contrary to what God tells you, don't you believe it and you obey God. Will you do it? I don't care who he is, how righteous he is, how much of a pastor he is, how much of a preacher, whether he's a prophet, he may be sent of God, a real, true, ordained prophet of God. But if God tells you something contrary to that prophet, don't you believe the prophet? You believe God. How many believe that's true? Read 1 Kings 13. A young prophet went out and prophesied against the all of Bethel there and done some miracles. The Lord said, don't you eat your drink and come back another way from the way you went in. And a real prophet of God went and deceived that prophet. Is that right? Might as well be truthful. He said, the angel of the Lord met me and told me to tell you to come to my house. He met me after he met you. And the prophet, believing that prophet, turned and went back. What happened to him? A lion killed him. Is that right? And the old prophet wept over it. Sure, because he listened to a man instead of God. No matter who says anything, believe God first. And God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same healer yesterday, today, and forever. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe, you receive it, you shall have it. you believe that? Then take, no matter what person says divine healing is not right, what person says this is not right, take God at his word. He said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be true. Is that right? Now, you can't blame me, friends from not doing what God said do. I believe the real true Christian would say, Brother Branham, our prayers are with you to do God's will. For some of these days, I've got to stand yonder, and I believe that that decision that I made in that room the other morning was between a long spell of, I don't know what would have happened, to just say that right there. By God's grace it was. But God let me go right back to that same space, the same thing, the same kind of the, everything, just exactly the same, right back to that same spot and dropped everything away from me to stand there alone to make my decision. 
God be thanked for with all my heart, my decision was according to the will of God. Now, I believe it with all my heart. Battle Creek, you might not understand this. I love you with undying Christian love. And God knows this word, that's the truth or not. It is the truth. But look, I trust that God will give me the opportunity by his divine will to return here to Battle Creek someday, if nothing else, to preach the gospel for a while here in Battle Creek. Now, I love you. Don't let this reflect on your pastors, on no one. It was just a first place for it to be set up like this. It was just a little error amongst the uh, understanding. And this was, but any time in a meeting, my management knows this to be true, if God should call me, I'd do it right then, regardless of how much set up or whatever it was, I must obey God. How many of you think that I did right? Thank you. Now, brother pastors, you see, 100% over the building. I knew if the Christians would see what was the truth, they'd believe. You pray for me, friends. My God, who I stand before, knows tonight that if it was, I know it was his divine will, I would like to stay right here in this city for the next six or eight weeks till I've seen this whole thing broke in a revival that would sweep the whole city. I would like to see it. God knows that. And I'm just as willing, but I must be flexible in his hands to do just what Philip would have stayed in Samaria. Very happily would he have stayed. What a revival he's having, preaching, healing, demons screaming and people confessing their sins. And God called him right out there to go out to the desert to meet one colored man coming down from Ethiopia. Is that right? And then didn't let him go back no more. What told him? The angel of the Lord appeared to him. Is that right? That Philip, come out now and go out here to Gaza. Is that right? Now the same God that lives then, lives then, lives now. He does the same thing. It's his same nature. God does works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. I want to read the scripture here just now. St. Luke 5. And it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the, uh, the lake of Jephthah and saw two ships standing by the lake. For the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into the one ship, one of the ships, which was Simon. I've got ink marked over that, and the reason is almost marked out of one of my favorite texts, which was Simon. And he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Wouldn't you like to have been there to hear that? Oh, it's been wonderful. Now, when he had left off speaking, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for the drop. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we've toiled all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net. And when he had this done, he closed a great multitude of fishes, and the net Break. And they beckoned to their partners, which were in the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Then Simon Peter saw it, or pardon, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zedebus, and were they were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch man. And when they had brought their when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all and followed him. This is the word I'll leave with you. Look at those fishermen. Just a moment. 
Look at them. Toiled all night to the lake. They were fishermen. They know the change of the moon. They know the time of water. And they'd seen all night commercial fishermen and had taken nothing. What a discouraging time. Got out, washing their nets, setting out on the bank. Let's drama this a minute. Look coming yonder. I see a young man in his 30s coming, walking down the bank. I imagine he looked a little older because he said his ministry was so strenuous on him. Come walking down the bank, two or three men walking with him. And I can look way back up on the hill along there at the feet, the fishermen and things along there. They say, there is that prophet of Galilee. Let's go down and see what he will say. They gathered up to the bank. I look lay, sitting on a log up there, and there Simon and them washed their nets, discouraged. They pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He said, can I use your boat just a moment? He jumped, got in the boat. They pushed out a little bit. Then after he got through speaking, he said, come here, Simon, you all. God never borrows nothing from you unless he pays you for it. Is that right? He said, come here. Now thrust out into the deep and let down to take the whole drop of fish. Now Simon said, now, Lord, we've seen through these waters all night. We haven't taken a fish. We've caught nothing. We know we're fishermen. We know this sea. We was raised here. Our fathers was raised here. And we've taken nothing from it. And there's just no fish in that water. Oh, my. But nevertheless, at thy word, I'll lay down the net. There you are. And when he let the net down, it finally fell down. He began to pull in a tug. When he pulled the fishes, he began to feel them flopping. Where did they come from? How did they get there? If there was no fish in the water, taking God at his word would bring fish in the water. Look, friends, you might have seen through every doctor's office in this country. You may be in every clinic there's been around here. The very best of our beloved doctors might have given you the last prescription they can. You've done everything. You might have been through this prayer line, that prayer line, this prayer meeting, this. What do you say tonight? This is Saturday night. Tomorrow is Sunday. Let's say this. Lord, I've done all but... At thy word, I'm going to let down the net tonight. Tonight, I'm going to believe. This is the time when I'm going to take you at your word. When you said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it, I'm letting down tonight, Lord, every doubt, every fear, and at your word, I'm coming, Lord. Can you do it? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, now I'm made. Your Holy Spirit move in a miraculous way. God hears the people in on his, just tonight. Here's cops, wheelchairs coming in. Oh God, may they be empty and go home. May they go home walking, leaping, praising God. And may because of this peculiar situation just here, may there be something happen tonight, Lord, that will start this revival rolling in this city that we won't take thy servant, your Lord. The Holy Spirit will be here if they'll just pray through tonight and get the victory and tomorrow morning maybe be on the street testifying, walking up and down the street, glorifying God and may there be an old-fashioned revival breakout here that would close every bootleg joint and God close up these Places that's open tonight and make mothers' boys become Christians and those daughters that's walking the streets and the way they're doing, God, may there be something happen before judgment comes. Grant it, Lord, and help me tonight as my in the ministry that thou hast divinely ordered, and thou knowest my heart that I'm trying to be true to the heavenly vision. And now, Father, grant that great signs and wonders will be wrought for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Excuse me for taking so long. We'll go right through the prayer line praying for the sick. Last evening, I asked you this. I said, do you want me to pray for the sick? Just bring the people through and pray for them. 
I think that's what he wanted. But I asked you, your choice was the other way, then if you don't get in the prayer line, you'll have to accept it out there where you are, see. So now, it's, it's your choice, not mine, yours. All right. Now, may the Lord bless you. Billy, what? Excuse me. All right. Didn't know he's behind me. What the prayer? He's, he's all right. Uh, 50 to 100. All right. Billy, give out the prayer cards a while ago. Let's start at 50 tonight and take... How many have we been calling? 15? Let's call about 25 tonight and see if we can't get a little bigger line. Or the whole 50 if we can get them standing, but I doubt whether we can get through them all in that kind of a line. If you want to, we can take... Let's see what 25 would be to start. Who's got the prayer card B or E? E, E50. Who's got prayer card E50? Now we can get started. E50. 51, 52, 53, on up for the first 25, up to 75. Line up right here according to your numbers on this side. And now, now look around at one another's prayer cards. Here's one of them right here. See? It's got... She might have heart trouble. If it is, that's number one enemy. Don't worry when you're going. If that was your child's mother, you'd be very sincere. Or if it was you, you'd be very sincere. So pray. Remember, it's somebody. Somebody. All right. Now, lady, I want you just to talk to me a minute. It's just, have you been to meetings before? This is your first night to be oh, well then it's kind of, may be a little strange to you. Do you ever read the Bible? You do. Your sister was healed in my meeting three years ago. Where was that at? Uh -huh. What was her trouble? Her sister flew into one of my meetings over a thousand miles. They flew her in three years ago and was healed in the meeting with a cancer, lumps on the breast, and she's never been bothered since. Then you would believe. Did she tell you how the meeting worked, how the Holy Spirit moved in the meeting, know the secrets of the heart? Probably that's what happened to her. Right. Said that I told her what was wrong with her, had prayer, and it left her. Now, that same Lord Jesus is here tonight. He knows all things. There's, and do you remember in the, you believe, of course, you'd have to know it was God. And you're, you're aware now that something is here at the platform. You, you know that something, that you're in the presence of a sacred, holy being, not your brother, of course not. But it's a, I'm just a man like you're a woman, but it's a spirit being. You're conscious of that. You, you know it. Well, now, I don't know you've never seen in my life, but the, God knows you. And if this be the anointing of the Holy Spirit here, then he can reveal to me, if, if he has chosen me back there for a channel to work through, then he can reveal to me just what he wants. Or he can stop it up, don't reveal nothing. Or he can tell you just what he wants you to know. Is that right? Just now, Jesus was standing talking to a woman one time, and he said, he asked her for a drink, and you know how the story goes. She said, the well's deep. 
He said, well, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And went ahead with the conversation. As we talked for a little while, he went right straight to where trouble was. He said, go get your husband. She said, I have none. I said, thou hast said well, or you have five. She said, I perceive that you are a prophet. And she ran into the city and said, come see a man who told me all the things I ever done. Isn't this the very Christ? And Jesus entered into the city. He never performed no miracles, as we understand. He's leaving that for Philip to do what I was talking about. He just went in there and began to talk to him. And they said, now, when Les said, we believe him because we've heard him talk. Not because the woman said so, but because we've heard him ourselves, we believe that he is the Son of God. And that broke the meeting, or the ground, and Philip went out and preached and healed the people, see? Jesus had another way of doing it, see? He knew he sent Philip down. Now, he's the same Jesus tonight. Is that right? Yes, he's able to heal you, sister. Now, whether he, he's able, see? Now, I want to correct you on something. Is it all right? See? He is only not able to do it. He has already done it. See? It's your faith to believe it or accept it. See? see? He has already done it. He couldn't do any more about it because there was, there was a penalty of sickness it between God and man. Jesus stepped right in and was beaten across the back. By his stripes, we were healed. See? That's already paid for. It's just our unbelief. Jesus said, if thou can believe, all things are possible. There it is. Here's a checkbook with my name signed on it. Just fill it out and send it into the Father. He'll recognize it. Isn't that simple? Oh, look, lady. The reason I've been taking quite a little time with you, I, I've seen something pass by you. Now, I, you know I don't know you. But having you been to a hospital several times or something, it's been four times uh, to a hospital. I've seen you go in, come out, go in and out like that different times. Is that right? And um, don't you have some kind of an inward trouble, like the female trouble in the inward parts? And you have also, you have colitis in, in, the, in the intestinal tract. Is that right? If that's right, raise your hand. Oh, sister, how would I, a man, it's left me. And you know that something's taking place. You don't even feel like you did a few moments ago. Is that right? If that's right, raise your hand. See? What it is, the angel of the Lord was here speaking, and it was moving to you. Now, if I could only get your faith to believe that, it would be all right, see? And just as soon as the vision went off, a feeling changed, you felt real light, went off, is that right? That's when you were healed, see? You, it, your faith has saved you. You believe that, didn't you? And while I was talking, I don't know now. Perhaps while I was talking, because I was, you heard my voice, but that wasn't me. That was that feeling that you had. That's what it was, see? It was moving through it. Now, you go home, the colitis is going to leave you and your other troubles, you go on home, be well. Give my congratulations to your sister, and the Lord Jesus bless thee, my dear sister. Amen. Everyone believe? Now, what would be hindering everybody from this tabernacle or this church tonight to be healed right now? Shouldn't you be healed just now? Sure, you should be healed right now. Believe with all your heart. Trying to believe, aren't you, lady, with your hands like this, with your handkerchief? You do. You have a prayer card. You don't have a prayer card, or you do. Now, are are we strangers, lady? You, how long ago was that been? Eighteen. Oh, 18 years ago. Uh, you were healed with cancer 18 years ago. 
some someone prayed for you and you was healed. Oh, I see. Then you, you, I want to ask you some questions. You answer me. I see something. Been a lot happened since then, hasn't there? You know what I'm talking about. You backslid on God. Well, I just didn't. And you've got the same thing again. You've got cancer again. Is that right? And you're ready for surgery right now. Is that true? All right. If that's raise your hand up. Look, lady. Death knocks at your door. You believe me to be his prophet? Yes, sir. You return to God and God will return to you. Well, I got a question to ask you. Yeah. He gave me the admission to go on and pray and, and work with the sick, but I never had health, so I That's one reason I, I don't really, I don't really backslid as far as backslidden is concerned, because I believe in God, and I know he But see, that does too, lady. I, of what I mean this, see, you don't understand what backsliding don't mean that you, you've gone some way from, you know, if, if a man, I'm a little bit of a Calvinist, see, not that radical type, but I'm Calvinistic. When a man's born again, but you backslid away from your calling from God. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. And you should have went and done something that you felt like that you wasn't able to do. Mm-hmm. Who made man tell? God. That's right. Now, do you believe? Yes. All right, come here. Do you now say to God, if he'll let you live and not die, that you'll serve him all the days of your life and will go do what he asked you to do? You will. Let's bow our heads, Christian. Heavenly Father, knowing standing here, the woman, knowing and realizing the presence of the great Almighty God, I pray, dear Jesus, that you will help her. And tonight, forgive her, Lord. No, Paul said, Woe unto me, if I preach not the gospel of Christ. Lord, here she's backslid on your promises and went back. Now, Father, I pray that you'll forgive her of everything and take her tonight at her word, and she comes to you with her hands up and tears down her cheeks, asking you, Lord, to remember her, for we realize that she can't live very much longer like this. And, Father, upon her confession, upon her heart's desire, I ask this demon of cancer that it will move back from her in the name of Jesus Christ to give her this chance of life. God bless you, lady. Go rejoicing. Let me hear what happens to you. Let's say praise be to God. All right, Billy. No, I ever want to be irreverent. That, the man has got a death spirit on him. Almighty God, author of life, giver of ever good gifts, send thy blessings upon this man. This death spirit moving up, feeling his cold, shaking being moving up close to me, knowing that he's got to come out of this man. He's standing in your presence. And Lord, we're believers. We believe that what you said is the truth. You said when the death spirit went out of the man, he could hear. And Lord, we believe that. And you said, I'll give you power that you go forth and preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. We believe that. And you said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have it. Therefore, Lord, by the commission of an angel, I ask for mercy for this man. Thou deaf spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say, leave the man. Come out of him. How long have you been here? All right. Raise your head. It's been this way for about 15 years. Listen. You hear me, sir? Yes. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. I love Jesus. 
I love you, Jesus. You've been kind of nervous, too, haven't you? That's a prostate trouble. It left you the same time, kind of getting up, you know, and things like that. So you know what I mean. The bathroom. That's gone from you, brother. You're healed now. Go on your road rejoice. Let's say praise the Lord. All right, Billy, sir. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Oh, uh, uh, how can you keep from believing? Why do you doubt longer? What can our Lord do any more than what he's doing? He's wonderful. You believe? Something's happened, hasn't it, brother? You hear me all right now? If it is, wave your hand like that so you can see. All right. You're healed. That man sitting next to you would like to get over something too, wouldn't you, sir? Do you believe me to be his prophet? Do you have a prayer card? You have a prayer card. Well, just while you're sitting there, I don't want you to use it then. You have a double hernia, don't you? A rupture? Hernia? Is that right? If it is, raise your hand. Say, the man sitting right on the other side of you has a hernia also on the other side of you on that side. Isn't that right, sir? All right, raise your hand up if that's right. Now you can you, 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 you well if you wish to. A man standing here last night was called in the lines out on the street today, had a great big rupture. It's every bit disappeared. It's gone from him. Go now, have faith in God. Little lady, he was over you a few minutes ago. I know what your disease is. If you will believe with all your heart, God will heal you. Do you believe? You had arthritis, didn't you? Is that right? Wave your hand like that. All right. He's done healed you, so he won't have to come in the prayer line. I just go on home and you. You're over your arthritis. Have faith in God. He is wonderful. All right. You're the patient. I mean, the lady that you... All right. You, uh, I want to ask you a few questions as I speak to you. You're just some woman that's got a prayer card and come up here on the line. There's something strange about the case. I see you right now. There's some, what's your nationality? Ukraine. Uh-huh. Hmm? This is kind of strange to you, isn't it? Uh-huh. See? Yeah, I believe that. And I believe you're really seeking Jesus Christ. I know, lady. Now look, you're trouble, you're having trouble in your shoulders, in your side, your back. Is that right? And then you've got a burden on your heart because you've got a young daughter. And that young daughter has got is paralyzed or got paralysis or something. Is that right? If that's all true, raise your hand. Being our, will you accept Jesus Christ now as your Savior and your healer for you and daughter both? Will you do it? Your orthodox is gone. You become a Christian in Jesus Christ's name. Go and may it be as you have been. Let's say praise be to God. The woman truly with tears rolling down her cheeks when the Holy Spirit struck her. She knows what had happened. That's right. God did the work just then. All right, come, lady. Don't fear. Have faith. God's going to do something for you, sister. The miraculous. Have faith. Believe me as his prophet. The same spirit was up on the Hebrew prophets is the same spirit here now. God takes his prophets, but never his spirit moves on. When one dies, the spirit comes on another. He goes on. In every generation, he's had someone. Have faith now. Or you're the patient lady. Yes. All right. Do you believe? Do you believe that God will reveal your troubles to me? And that's all I can do by the gift. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Now look, you are a believer. 
filled with the Spirit. And now look, you are, you have a, 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 a nervous condition, a, a strain which is due to the time of it is with you. And, uh, and then another thing is you got a stomach trouble. Is that right? That's right. And your nervousness has caused the stomach trouble, which is an ulcer in the stomach, causes souring and so forth, and the swelling and sometimes flurring of the heart and, and your mental conditions and that you feel strained and upset all the time, depressed. Is that right? And many times Satan has told you you've crossed over the line and all those things. Is that right? But he's lied. He's lied. Jesus Christ has healed you. Do you believe that? Go eat what you want to then. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. All right. Come, sir. You believe? Sir, you believe with all your heart? What if the Holy Spirit, that what you feel now, would come near and say to you like he did the woman at the well, her greatest trouble, just tell her what her greatest trouble was, would you believe him? Accept him? Don't you have something wrong? It's either in your throat or it's in your chest one. I see you standing coughing. It's, it's, it's asthma. Is that right? Is that right? All right. Go off the platform saying, thank you, Jesus, I'm over it. See? Go off the platform, giving God praise. It'll leave you and never bother you no more. Come in. Oh, how he moves to get the people to believe. Young man, look here. You're a very young chap to be standing here sick. What do you think about Jesus Christ? You love him. Is he the Son of God? Is he your healer? He is. He can make you get over that stomach trouble right now. Is that right? Well, then go eat what you want to. Your faith saves you. All right. Come, little lad. Your young chappy, too. Do you believe? You go to Sunday school. You love the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you like to serve him all the days of your life? If he'll let you get well, will you do that? It's only for his glory that you would do it. All right, look, sister, come near this moment. You believe with all your heart? Well, just a few moments ago, when I was speaking to someone here, you standing back down the line like that second lady standing back there now, it is the same thing. You were very alarmed when I told the lady about what kind of feeling she was having of a nervous condition. Is that right? Because you have exactly the same thing. You, is that right? Now, do you believe he's going to make you well? But what you want me to do is pray for you. That's what you were thinking about, right? And not read your mind, but that's what you were thinking. You say, is he going to pray for me? Come in your mind right quick. Is that right? That's right. So you can't hide those thoughts, you see. It's in his presence. Now, come here. Because that's what you have to have to be well. And you're going to receive it, I believe, with all my heart. Dear Heavenly Father, seeing that the woman has that point of contact, that I must pray for her, speaking it right out of her mind as the seen it going through and seeing her shaking her head otherwise, I pray, God, that you will heal her. And now, this devil, this thing is trying to make her lose her mind. I say to thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of the woman. Now, look, sister, go home. You're going to get well. You believe me? Amen. If God knew what you were and what you are, because he knows what you will be, you're going to be all right. Then go home now. God may say, all right, come to me. How do you do? Do you believe? With all your heart, you believe that he would make you well. You have number one enemy, heart trouble. Is that right? True. All right. You believe.